Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here, your host once more for this episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It's Monday, so of course I have new observances, history lessons, animals and plants to see, a new place to explore, and of course some Spanish words to learn. And be sure you're logging in for the Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Educational Team. So let's not delay anymore. Let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Hey Discovery Learners, it's me Andrew again, and I'm here to bring you some new observances. Our first observance is National Paris Helene Day. Today, on March 15th, National Paris Helene Day is celebrated. It's a food holiday about the delicious, smooth French dessert that combines warm poached pears, vanilla ice cream, and chocolate sauce. Paris Helene is a dessert made from poached pears and sugar syrup and is served with vanilla ice cream, chocolate syrup, and crystallized violets. Around 1864, French chef Augustin Escoffier created the dessert in honor of the Opera de la Bella Helene by Jacqueline Offenbach. But over time, Paris-Helene has simpler versions. They've been developed by substituting poached pears with canned pears, and delicate crystallized violets have been replaced with sliced almonds. Those modifications made it easier for more cooks to prepare the must-have dessert. There are more than 3,000 varieties of pears grown around the world. Washington, Oregon, and Northern California grow more than 95% of the pears sold in the United States. California alone grows 60% of all Bartlett pears in the U.S. Pears ripen best off of the tree, which is unusual where most fruit ripen and then fall off the tree. Pears are an excellent source of vitamin A and vitamin C, as well as copper, fiber, and potassium. Pears are less allergic than most other fruits. That's a good thing. I don't know about you, Discovery Learners, but I have food allergies, and that's an important thing to know about the food I'm eating. How can you observe National Pears Helene Day? Well, that's simple. There are many different pears, over 3,000. So why not try a combination of your favorite pear with your favorite sauce, and maybe sprinkle some nuts or something fancy on top? Let us know in the comment section below how you plan to celebrate. Our next observance is National Shoe the World Day. Each year, National Shoe the World Day on March 15th shines light on the value of good footwear for millions of people around the world. Each day, over 500 million children, teens, and adults do not have a good pair of shoes to wear. Despite their terrain, their climate, they walk barefoot everywhere. Their daily struggle is one we can't begin to imagine. Living daily without protection for your feet can lead to a lifetime of problems, including pain, injuries, cuts, sores, infections, even parasites. Schools and businesses ban students and customers without shoes. We attach stigmas to the people who do not have proper footwear too. Life without footwear can also affect their health, education, and financial well-being. One issue leads to another, creating a never-ending cycle. There are a few who are fortunate enough to have one pair of shoes even though they are much too big for them. This way, their shoes will last for many years as they grow, and they're only allowed to be worn on special occasions. In other cases, they may have a pair of shoes that are too small and tight, but they make them work. It's sad to think that a pair of shoes can be considered a luxury, but that's where we come in, Discovery Learners, because we can observe National Shoe the World Day by starting a shoe drive at work or at school or in our community. Volunteer. There are nine distribution centers in the United States that donate shoes to people in need. You can also volunteer in your own community to help those who need footwear locally, create a fundraiser, or if you need to maintain social distance, visit Souls for Souls. Souls, the number four, Souls, to donate your shoes right from your own home. Let us know what you plan on doing, Discovery Learners, in the comments section below. Our final observance is National Napping Day. Each year, National Napping Day recognizes our need for the nap the following day after daylight savings time returns. Not only does the observance encourage a nap, it reminds us that there's no shame in taking one either. Even though you can try your best to prepare your internal clock for the shock of the time change, there are things that can throw you off anyway, like young children or your job schedule. So it's not the easiest thing to do when the time falls back an hour. That's where a midday afternoon nap comes in. 
It's actually integral in parts of most cultures and scientifically proven to be good for you. A needed rest can make you feel better and also improve your mood. After having a little extra amount of sleep, a person will notice that it will be more productive and energetic. Numerous studies have shown that a short 10 to 20 minute nap is the most effective way to combat midday fatigue. So how can you observe National Napping Day? Well, that's easy. After you have your lunch today, why not cuddle up with a blankie and take yourself a little 10 minute nap? Let us know in the comment section below if you're planning on taking a nap today on National Napping Day. On this day in history. Today in 1972, The Godfather, based on the book by Mario Puzo and directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and starring Marlon Brando and Al Pacino, premiered in New York. The film stars Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Caan, Richard Costellano, Robert Duvall, Sterling Hayden, John Marley, Richard Conte, and Diane Keaton, first of the installment of the Godfather trilogy. The story, spanning from 1945 to 1955, it chronicles the Corleone family under the patriarch Vito Corleone, played by Marlon Brando. Focusing on the transformation of his youngest son, Michael Corleone, played by Al Pacino, from the reluctant family outsider to the ruthless mafia boss. Paramount Pictures obtained the rights to the novel for the price of $80,000 before it gained popularity. The Godfather premiered at the Lowe's Theater on March 15, 1972, and was widely released in the United States on March 24, 1972. It was the highest grossing film of that year and was for a long time the highest grossing film ever made, earning between 246 and 287 million at the box office. The film received universal acclaim from both critics and audiences, with praise performances particularly by those of Brando and Pacino. The directing, screenplay, and cinematography, editing, score, and portrayal of the Mafia, The Godfather acted as a catalyst for the successful careers of Coppola, Pacino, and other relative newcomers in the cast and crew. Additionally, the film revitalized Brando's career, which had declined in the 60s, and he went on to star in such films as The Last Tango in Paris, Superman, and Apocalypse Now. Wow, isn't history awesome? Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is... Bruce Bader Ginsburg, born March 15, 1933, in Brooklyn, New York. This American associate judge of the Supreme Court, nominated by Bill Clinton in 1993, was well known for her constant advocation of gender equality. Before she was famous, she worked with the ACLU to advance the treatment of women after she graduated from Columbia Law School. She continued her work for women's equality on the Supreme Court, where she ruled at Virginia Military Institute a state-funded school, could not refuse entry to women. She recently passed away in September 18, 2020, at the age of 87. Happy birthday, Ruth! Our next notable figure born today is... Dee Snyder, born March 15, 1955, in Queens, New York. This American vocalist songwriter is known for his work with heavy metal band Twisted Sister. Before he was famous, he was selected to the All-State Choirs while attending Baldwin High School and also sang a part of the school's concert choir. He was also once ranked number 83 in Hit Parade's 2006 list of the top 100 metal vocalists of all time. Hmm, not bad. Happy birthday, D. Another notable figure born today is... Eva Longoria Born March 15, 1965 in Corpus Christi, Texas This American actress rose to fame on ABC's hit series Desperate Housewives and later had roles in series Telenova and Mother Up In 2018, she was cast as a titular character mom in the film Dora the Explorer She won multiple Screen Actor Guild Awards and was named the Philanthropist of the Year in 2009 by THR Before she was famous while studying in college, she gained the title of Miss Corpus Christi in 1998. She later starred in the episode of Beverly Hills 90210 and appeared in the episode of General Hospital. She has also won an ALMA award for Person of the Year in 2006. She opened a restaurant called Besso in Hollywood with Todd English in 2008. 
Lastly, she executive produced and directed the show Devious Maids. She turns 46 years old today. Happy birthday, Eva. And our last notable figure born today is Will I Am. Born March 15, 1975 in Los Angeles, California. This American singer was born William James Adams. He became known for his work as the founding member of the Black Eyed Peas, along with Fergie and Taboo. With the Black Eyed Peas, he won seven Grammy Awards and three World Music Awards. He also had a solo career and worked as a music producer. Before he was famous, he was raised in Boyle Heights Housing Project in East Los Angeles and attended Palisades Charter High School, where he befriended Alan Pineda, another future member of the Black Eyed Peas. He also won a Grammy Award for Best Rap Performance for Let's Get It Started in 2005. Wow! He turns 46 years old today. Happy birthday, Will I Am! Happy birthday, everyone! Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are traveling to Ireland. And you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, of course. That's the Irish National Anthem. Hmm, pretty nice music. Now, why don't we take this time to take a deeper look at the Irish flag. This nation's flag is vertically striped, green, white, and orange. It is said that the color green represents the Roman Catholics. Orange represents the Protestants, and white for the peace between them. Ireland's current iteration of their flag has been in use since December 29, 1937. Ooh, I like their flag. It also bears resemblance to India's flag, but we'll get to that whenever we cover India. Back to Ireland, I like their flag. What do you think of it? While you ponder, Let's learn a little bit more about Ireland. Ireland is located in Western Europe, with the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, to the east and north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and the Irish Sea to the east. Due to its abundance of rain, the Irish landscape is covered with lush greenscapes, which is responsible for the popular nickname, the Emerald Isle. Ireland is also renowned for its wealth of folklore, from tales of tiny leprechauns with hidden pots of gold, to that of the patron saint, Patrick. Ireland's official name is Ire, which means Ireland in Irish. Its official form of government is a unitary multi-party republic with two legislative houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Its head of state is a president. They also have a Prime Minister. The capital of Ireland is Dublin, and its official language is English and Irish. Ireland's official religion is Catholicism. Ireland's main monetary unit is the Euro. 0.83 euros equals 1 US dollar. The current population in Ireland is 4 million. 991,000 people. The total area of Ireland is 27,133 square miles. That is around the same size as the U.S. state of Maine. The main exports of Ireland are blood. No, really, it's blood. Also, antisera and vaccines. Rounding off the list is medications. And Ireland's biggest money-making industries are agriculture, mining, logging, and fishing. Finishing off that list is tourism. Ireland is a very interesting place with a very rich history and traditions. And with St. Patrick's Day around the corner, what better way to celebrate by learning a little bit more of where the holiday comes from? Did you know? My substitute teacher, Andrew Lancaster, is Irish. <laughs> Do you know any Irish people? What about you? Are you Irish or part Irish? Even if you're not, Ireland is a fun country to learn about. 
and I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure to stay tuned all week long to Ability to Learn as we teach you more about Ireland. Here is the animal of the day. Hey Discovery Learners, today's animal is the goat. The goat is a descendant of the wild goat, probably the Bezor Ibex, native to Southwest Asia and Eastern Europe. Goats are used as a source of meat, milk, and skin for at least 9,000 years. There are over 942 million goats in total that can be found all over the world. Besides residing on farms, domestic goats can also be found in the wild. Feral populations are especially numerous in Australia and New Zealand and in the UK. Goats can reach 16 to 42 inches in height and 20 to 250 pounds. Goats have triangular eyes with prominent horizontal pupils. Both males and females have beards, stout bodies, narrow horns, and cloven hooves, and little short upright tails. Goats have excellent night vision and wide visual fields. This allows them to see predators without even having to move their heads. Goats aren't grazers. It's a brower that likes to eat various types of leaves and vines. Goats are often used for clearing unwanted vegetation in many parts of the world. This practice is known as conservation grazing, despite them being browers. Most people believe that goats aren't picky eaters, but they actually only test the edibility of things that they never saw before. According to some stories, goats are even responsible for the discovery of coffee. A shepherd in Ethiopia realized that his goats became more energized after consuming the leaves of the coffee brush, and then he decided to taste the leaves himself. And soon afterwards, coffee became an inevitable part of the human diet. Goats are very agile climbers and can easily climb up a tree. It also travels across steep terrains and jump five feet in the air. Goats are very social animals. They like to spend time with other goats. Unlike sheep, goats are more independent-minded. Goats are very intelligent and very curious animals. They like to investigate the unknown and sometimes get themselves in some sticky situations. Goats can communicate with each other via bleeding. A goat's pregnancy lasts 150 to 180 days and ends with one or two babies. And guess what those babies are called? They're called kids. Baby kids are able to walk and follow their mothers a few minutes after birth. The mother and kid recognize each other by unique calls and smells. The kid is fully weaned at the age of three to six months, depending upon the variety of goat. And goat lifespan lasts 15 to 18 years. That's all really cool, Discovery Learners. Did you learn anything new about goats? I actually knew quite a bit, as my great aunt used to have a goat named Billy that she used to clear the fields with. He was a cute little guy. He liked to knock over other animals and bleat. I'm pretty sure he was laughing. Let us know in the comment section below what cool goat facts you learned today. The Plant of the Day It's time to learn about a new plant, and today's plant is the potato. The potato is a herbaceous plant of the nightshade family. There are 200 species of wild potato and over 4,000 varieties that were produced by selective breeding. Potato originates from South America. It has been introduced to Europe in the 16th century when people started to cultivate it. Cultivation of potato is easier, faster, and requires less fertilizers compared to the cultivation of other crops. People throughout the world cultivate and consume hundreds of different types of potatoes. Potato consumption is almost equal to the consumption of mayas and corn and wheat. The size of a potato depends on the variety. It usually grows 24 inches in height. The largest ever recorded had 18 pounds and 4 ounces of weight. That's enough potato to prepare 73 portions of medium-sized french fries. The edible part of a potato is the underground stem, better known as the tuber. Potatoes can produce white, red, purple, or blue flowers. The color of the flower is closely associated with the color of the skin of the potato. Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI used flowers of potato for decoration. Potatoes are pollinated by insects, such as bumblebees. Potatoes can also reproduce via seed tubers and cuttings. Potatoes are a rich source of carbohydrates, like starch. They have vitamin C and vitamins of the B group. They also have a high content of fiber and other important minerals. 
Potatoes do need to be cooked before consumption. The most popular dishes include mashed potatoes, french fries, boiled potatoes, baked potatoes, and potato chips. Over 300 million tons of potatoes are produced each year. The greatest amount of potatoes are produced in China. The potato is a staple food in numerous countries around the world. The Great Irish Famine in the 19th century was a consequence of fungal disease of potato, known as potato blight. This fast-spreading disease and lack of potatoes led to nearly a million human beings dying. The green parts of a potato contain a substance called solanine. That substance produces toxic effects in humans. Potatoes are prone to viral, bacterial, and fungal diseases. Also, they are often targeted by various insects and worms that lay eggs in various parts of the potatoes. Yeah. Scientists have developed several genetically modified potatoes in the last couple of decades. New types of potatoes are resistant to pests and able to survive various climates or enrich protein. The blue potato is a variety of potato that originates in South America. The skin and flesh of the potato are purple, but they become blue after cooking. The potato is a perennial plant, which means it can survive more than two years in the wild. The potato is the first plant that was launched and successfully grown inside of a space shuttle in 1995. That's pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but I learned some really cool facts about potatoes, and I love potatoes. How about you, Discovery Learners? Did you learn anything new? And what's your favorite way to eat a potato? Let us know in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Hey, Discovery Learners. The word of the day is hyperbole. Hyperbole is a noun. It's spelled H Y P E R B O L E. A hyperbole is a figure of speech in which exaggeration is used for emphasis or effect. As in, I could sleep for a year, or this book weighs a ton. Those are examples of hyperbole. Our next word is a word you might have heard somewhere else in the video today. And that word is Blarney. It's a noun. Blarney is spelled B-L-A-R-N-E-Y. It's defined as skillful flattery or nonsense. Hola, Discovery Learners. Soy yo, tu maestra Liz. Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher Liz. And ese es tu español, la palabra de la semana. What that means is, here's your Spanish word of the week. La palabra para esta semana es zapatos. Zapatos. Zapatos, which means shoes. Zapatos, shoes, zapatos. You can use this word in a phrase. Ponte los zapatos. Ponte las zapatos. Ponte las zapatos, which means put on your shoes. Ponte las zapatos. Put on your shoes. Ponte las zapatos. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying Ponte las zapatos, which means put on your shoes. Ponte las zapatos. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week right here on Ability to Learn. Hey Discovery Learners, it's me Andrew Lancaster here, and with St. Patty's Day right around the corner, let's take a look at some fun, fantastic movies about the Irish, with a film from 2001 called The Luck of the Irish. This fantasy film has a 1 hour and 26 minute runtime. It stars Henry Gibson as Riley O'Reilly and Ryan Merriman as Kyle, and is available on Disney+. Plus. Next up is The Secret of the Roan Irish. This 1994 film is a fantasy adventure. It has a runtime of 1 hour and 43 minutes. It's rated PG and is available on YouTube. Next up is Secret of the Kells. This PG film from 2009 is a family fantasy film. It has a 1 hour and 18 minute runtime. It stars Brendan Gleeson as the Abbot and is available on YouTube. Let's take a deeper look at this cinematic work of art. This week's cinematic work of art is The Song of the Sea. 
It was directed by Tom Moore and stars Lisa Hannigan and Brendan Gleeson and David Rowley. The Song of the Sea is an amazing film. It combines wonderful artistry that pays exquisite homage to the artwork that accompanies the Irish folklore that it's depicting. It tells the tale of the Selkie, the half-woman, half-seal creatures, and the one Selkie who can reunite Macha with her son McLear. The story is told beautifully, while also exploring the relationship of a small family that finds itself in the center of this tale of magic, loss, love, and adventure. It's given life by the beautiful score that sets a magical tone for the movie, but can still underscore the emotional gravity of a particular scene, making the film seem like a moving painting that invokes deep emotion to anyone that views it, making this film a cinematic work of art. This PG film from 2014 is also a family fantasy. It has a 1 hour and 34 minute runtime and can be found on Netflix. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that leprechauns are the bankers and cobblers of the fairy world? Leprechauns are known for their money, and there apparently a lot of it to be made in the cobbling business. Since they spend most of their time alone, the tiny little green men pour all their energy into crafting shoes. They are said to always have a hammer and shoe in hand. According to legend, you can hear them coming by their telltale tapping sound they make. While some stories attribute the leprechaun's wealth to the fine shoes they make, others say they protect the treasures of the entire fairy world. One tale says the leprechauns act as the bankers to make sure all the frivolous fairies don't spend all their gems at once. But leprechauns can be generous if you're kind to them. Constantly being chased for one's gold or cereal can take a toll on any fairy's demeanor. As a result, leprechauns are distrustful and secretive. This attitude doesn't mean they won't loosen their purse strings if touched by a bit of kindness. One legend mentions a down-on-his-luck nobleman offering a leprechaun a ride on his horse. In return, the man returned to his crumbling castle to find it filled with the ceiling with gold. So yeah, leprechauns are more interesting than you thought. Not only do they have a pot of gold, but they earned it by making a whole bunch of shoes. And they're the bankers of the fairy world. Pretty cool. Aw, we all know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn. From the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.